It's been 49 weeks and counting since the 2016 election. The hunt is still on for proof of Russian meddling. Did Putin get Trump elected? We still don't know. We did recently speak, though, to progressive journalist Glenn Greenwald, who said the press is replacing good reporting with inaccurate scandal mongering. Watch this. So, Glenn, just to, to get to the facts of this story, it is conclusively shown that the story about the 21 voting systems being hacked is untrue, correct? It's false in two ways. One is that several of the states included in the list, such as Wisconsin, California, and Texas, said that the websites that the Homeland Security Department cited have nothing to do with voting systems. They're entirely unrelated. And it's false in a second way, which is a lot of the stories, in fact, most of them said that Russia tried to hack into the voting systems, when in fact, even Homeland Security, it can only show that what they did was scan those computer systems, which is basically casing something to see for vulnerabilities and made no attempts to actually hack into them. So it was false on, on various levels. So you and I don't agree on a lot of issues, but I think we share the same concern about this story, and that is that American journalists are being manipulated for whatever reason by the intelligence community in the United States. And I'm wondering why, after years of having this happen to American journalists, they're allowing this to happen again. Well, that's the thing. I would reframe that a little bit. I don't actually think so much that journalists are the victims in the sense of that formulation that they're being manipulated. I think at best what you can say for them is they're willingly and eagerly being manipulated. <laughs> uh, because what you see is over and over they publish really inflammatory stories that turn out to be totally false. And what happens in those cases? Nothing. They get enormous benefits when they publish recklessly. They get applause on social media from their peers. They get zillions of retweets huge amounts of traffic. They end up on TV. They get applauded across the spectrum because people are so giddy and eager to hear more about this Russia and Trump story. And when their stories com get completely debunked, it just kind of everybody agrees to ignore it and it mo everyone moves on and they pay no price. At the same time, they're feeding and pleasing their sources by publishing these stories that their sources want them to publish. Um, and so there's huge amounts of career benefits and reputational benefits and very little cost um, when they publish stories that end up being debunked because because the narrative they're serving is a popular one, at least within their peer circles. Gosh, that's, that's so dishonest. I mean, I think all of us in journalism have gotten things wrong. I certainly have. And you feel bad about it. I mean, you really do. And there's a consequence. You really think there's that level of dishonesty in the American press? I think what most more I think what it is more than dishonesty is a, a really warped incentive scheme bolstered by this very severe groupthink that social media is fostering in ways that we don't yet fully understand. Yes. Most journalists these days aren't in congressional committees or at zoning board meetings or using shoe letter reporting. They're sitting on Twitter talking to one another. And this produces this extreme groupthink where these orthodoxies arise and deviating from them or questioning them or challenging Challenging, believe me, um, results in all kinds of recrimination and scorn. Um, and embracing them produces this sort of in-group mentality where you're rewarded. And I think a lot of it is about that kind of behavior. That is really deep. I mean, you live in a foreign country. I'm not on social media. <laughs> so maybe we've got a little bit of distance uh, from this. Where do you think this story is going? What's the next, what's the next incarnation of it? Well, the odd part about it and about the impatience that journalists have in trying to just jump to the, the finish line is that there are numerous investigations underway in the city, including by credible investigators, including Senator Burr and Warner and the Senate Intelligence Committee, which most people seem to trust, and certainly Robert Mueller, who's armed with subpoena power, and everyone is, is really eager to, to lavish with praise. So we're going to find out, presumably one way or the other, um, soon enough. I guess the one thing that's so odd to me, Tucker, is that this has been going on now for a year, this accusation that the Trump administration or the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians to hack the DNC and John Podesta's email. And we know that there are huge numbers of people inside the government who are willing to leak, even at the expense of committing crimes, in order to undermine Trump. And yet there's been no leak so far showing any evidence of that right. kind of collusion, leading one to wonder why that is. Um, so I hope that everybody's willing to wait until the actual investigation reveals finally the real <laughs> answers. Um, um, but it doesn't seem that, that that will be the case. Bravery is when you disagree in public with your peers. And by that definition, you are a very brave man, Glenn Greenwald. Thanks for joining us tonight. I appreciate it.
Thanks for having me, Tucker.